Spiritual judge all things. 1 Corinthians 14 talks about when somebody's prophesying. He says, let one prophesy and let the others judge. You better judge when somebody's prophesying. You better judge whether or not they're speaking from this book or you'll be a lie, believe a lie and be damned. Come on, anybody here to hold on. Here's how some people judge. They say, but boy, I felt it. And so did you feel something go across your body when you was watching that soap opera as my stomach turns today too? Look at your neighbor and say, you better not live by your feelings. You better know the word of God. Hello? Anybody here Holy Ghost? Remember how Jacob deceived his father? Hello? Isaac? Isaac couldn't see him. And Jacob said, I'll put some skins on to make me hairy like my brother Esau the oldest and I'll steal the blessing. Come on. Isaac couldn't see him. Hallelujah. He said, you sound like Jacob, but you feel like Esau. So he blessed him in here. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, your feelings can deceive you. If Isaac would have listened to the voice, he knew that voice. He knew that word Jacob, but he went off his feelings instead of his hearing. Amen. Somebody shot you better know this. But everything that gives a good little feel good ain't necessarily from the Holy Ghost. Anybody here holding me? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory. Thank I, I can tell you Thank some you. stories of stuff I've had to deal with throughout the years and watch it tear churches apart. And I will share one or two of them, maybe if the Holy Ghost directs me, but that'd take me all night. Hallelujah to tell you, Mom. Come on, somebody. But just this very principle of what I'm talking about destroys. Come on, church. One example a man, the pastor had a nice, awesome church. Let's go there and preach. Hallelujah. One day sitting over a table of food and he had to go start another church somewhere because all what happened, he said, and he said, Well, Marvin, he said, I don't know why. He said, This happened. He said, I can't put my finger on why the church just got tore all apart and how this thing just almost tried to destroy my ministry and take me down completely never let me rise up again he said but thank god by his grace we're still doing what he's called us to do but we're still suffering from the effects of all that that went on and and i said well pastor because he was asking me i said well let's just go on a journey backwards and i said let's let's talk about it i, I said let's start at the pulpit i said now i know how you preach hello you you open the bible i said but tell me who's been in the pulpit Let's go there. Because so goes this, so goes that. This is that. And he said, well, and he kind of looked funny on his face for a minute and he said, since you mentioned that, he said, there's a woman I've been allowing to come every few months in the church and she'll run several times a year what we call just a a three night prophetic conference. He said she's a prophetess and says she comes just probably, I don't know, it may have been five times a year, but she'd take three nights each time she came. And, and they, they had like, I said, well, when you say prophecy conference now, you're not talking about end time prophecy, are you? He said, no, no, no. I said, you're talking about personal. He said, yeah. I said, is that, all that, is that all it consisted of? His personal prophecies. And the pastor said, come think about it. It did. I said, I'll describe her to you. I ain't never been in her service. I said, but here's what she did. She went up to the pulpit. She may have sang a little bit. She may even open the Bible and maybe even read one or two scriptures. But she never expounded upon the scriptures she read. And she just made her point and began to call people out and prophesy to them. And an hour and two hours go by and people's just been prophesying. Everybody in the house and they laid out everywhere. He said, how did you know? I said, brother, here's your problem. That's where it came in at. I said, that's been a witch in your pulpit. I said, because real prophets preach. Somebody say a real prophet will preach. They don't just prophesy. Come on, somebody. Yeah. They preach. And a prophet that don't preach, be warned, says the spirit of truth, is nothing but a witch. It's nothing but a wolf. 
over zipped up in some sheets crying. I said, I bet you, before it was all over with, she turned against you, didn't she? He said, yeah, you're right. She began to go through the picture. She was trying to get to church. But she didn't. But I said, look at you. You ain't there now. Huh? I said, how often? I said, Karen, can you remember any of it? Did she open the Bible and preach from it? He said, come to thank God. She, if she did, she may have just like you said, read a one or two script. He said, but she never actually preached no precepts from this book. She had a lot of charisma. I said, brother, you have had a witch in your midst. Christianized witchcraft. Hallelujah. It can be so eloquent. It can be, come on, somebody so goosebumpy. Hey, man, feel goody. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor say, a false prophet on a soggy. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the first church of the masseuse. The massage parlor. They're, they're massage. Somebody shout their soothsayers. At 16 and 16, Paul cast the demon out of a woman. Hallelujah. And the Bible said she had a soothsaying spirit. Somebody say she, had, she was a witch. A witch will soothe you. They tell you all the time what you want to hear. They don't never ruffle the feathers, ruffle the fur. They don't never pull back the wool on the sheep. Come on, somebody. They just always caress the sheep. The sheep can be in sin, but it don't matter. The merchandise, them, they'll just cut them. Just manicure them, make them feel good. They're soothsayers. They soothe you. You can be in sin and they'll still soothe you. They'll prophesy how God's going to use you. Come on, somebody. And you ain't even living right. They'll prophesy how God's going to bless you. And you rob God of your tithe and offering every time you go to church. They're soothsayers. They'll tell you what you want to hear to get out of you what they want. Hello? You see them on TV a lot, especially late at night. They come out and flash your club. Yeah. Come on, somebody. They might read one scripture or put one scripture at the bottom of the screen, but the whole half hour, they advertise nothing but their gimmicks, and they don't preach nothing really about God. Usually they're advertising a, a bunch of hype and emotionalism where people are saying they're getting miracle money because they drank some miracle water, or they gave this dollar offender, that thousand dollar Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost, but nobody ever preaches. That's how you know they don't preach. Somebody and shout the false prophet can't preach hallelujah all they do is just display gimmicks Amen. and don't get me wrong God's chosen the foolishness of preaching to say that the will believe 1 Corinthians 1 21 hello I'm not talking about stagnant, dead, old, dried up. Come on, somebody, preaching and talking. I'm talking about God will use foolishness in preaching. If you don't believe it, just watch me for a little while. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. But he uses foolish preaching to save them that will believe. So I'm not talking about we can't have a righteous foolishness. Come on, somebody. He not meant to. But at the same time, some of these people are advertising glory, and it ain't nothing. <laughs> Goofy. They never preach on judgment. They never warn sinners about hell. They're just there to encourage you to believe. Demons believe in tremble, James 2 and 19, and they're on their way to hell. Somebody shouts, you can believe for a miracle and still die and go to hell. Come on, anybody. Jesus come preaching Mark 1 15. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus said, here's my message of faith. Repent. I like that, don't you? Repent. That means turn from your sin. Come on. That don't mean just change your mind. That means turn. Change the direction you're going in. Walk away from it. You're not going to hear him preach that because I don't say it. Hell won't make money. Judgment don't make money. But Paul stood before Felix in Acts chapter 24 in verses 25 and preached in reason of righteousness and the judgment to come and Felix trembled. 
They ought to be one of them preachers that make it, that folks start trembling. Come on, they can't sit still no more. They're they squirming at They start looking at the clock. They start thinking how I can get out of here. Maybe if you look that way, I can run and scoot them out of here. Because I, 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 I want, I, come on somebody. I want a trembling to come when the raw naked truth hits the room that folks either have to run the Lord and surrender They can't sit still in comfort. Let me tell you, the naked truth of God's word, the truth may hurt you. It often does. But I promise you one thing, the truth will never comfort you with a lie. I remember in cemetery, I mean seminary, I remember one minister stood up teaching. I thought, Lord God, when he got to teaching, I thought, oh, God, help us. Blind, I'm leading the blind. Help me keep my eyes open, Jesus. Hello? There's some of the stuff he started teaching us. Hello? And people will say an amen to it. And I thought, oh, God, have mercy on us, oh, Lord. He was telling us preachers, we need to know this Sunday what we're going to preach next Sunday. I looked at my wife and I cracked up because this was in 1998 and I'd just come out of a five-month revival where we preached on Sunday morning all the way through Saturday night. Started back on Sunday morning. People was getting saved. Filled with the Holy Ghost every service. Miracles, signs and wonders happened. Amen. About six to seven people who were dying with cancer in the hospital walked into the revival before it was ever over. Healed with the doctor documentation in their hand. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you, God was moving. I just laughed. I chuckled. I said, my God, you wonder what he'd have done. I, we'd have had to bury him. He had had a nervous breakdown. A move of God don't require a no, but it does require a flow. You got to know how to flow it. You got to know it. You got you to have more than a, because too much study in the weary of the flesh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 12. Luke 12 and 12 said the Holy Ghost will teach you in the very hour of what you want to say. Matthew 10 20 said it's not you that speaks but the Spirit of your Father that speaks in you. Somebody shout the Holy Ghost is the preacher. Some of you preachers can stop ganging up on God on Saturday night if you realize that. Come on, the Holy Ghost is. When you got a relationship with Him, that don't mean you don't study, but I don't study to preach. I study because His Word is pure and I love it. Psalm 119, 140. Come on, somebody. The Holy Ghost, if you put it in, He'll bring it out. He'll bring back to you remembrance whatever He said unto you. John 14, 26. Somebody told me one time, I said, Bet you don't even have to study, do you? It just comes to you. I looked at him. I said, Now can I pinch you and wake you up? I said, The Holy Ghost brings it back to your remembrance. He brings it back. It ain't my memory. You can ask my wife, you can ask my daughter if she's here or not somewhere. She went to the bathroom and think, Hallelujah. Running the camera upstairs. Hallelujah. It ain't my memory. Hey, sometimes I'll leave my house. Y'all ever do it? I know y'all don't do it. I know y'all don't do this, brother. I had to back up sometimes three times. All the way at the end of the drive, which is about 120 yards from the yard to the road, and then I get on the road and I'm like, my Lord, I forgot this. And turn around and go back. I'm always forgetting something. Hallelujah. Somebody shout it's Holy Ghost. I ain't got time to tell you how the gift came on me. But I can tell you, come out of furnace of affliction. Maybe one night I'll share it before we get through here. Hallelujah. But friend, I want you to understand something by the Spirit of God. Holy Ghost moves on the water of this word. And wherever his move is, there's going to be a God said. Because any manifestation and any miracle so-called happening, if it don't come off of this, it is a false, it's a lying wonder. Come on, anybody. And I've heard people say, well, Brother Marvin, they prophesied and it came to pass. Don't that prove they're a true prophet? I said, if that's the case, Samuel should have been a false prophet. Because in 1 Samuel, chapter 16, Samuel looks at Elab, uh, Jesse's oldest son, and shouts out, Surely this is the anointing of the Lord! God rebukes him and said, I don't look on the outward appearance. I look on the heart. In other words, a prophet of God. Miss God big time. Look at your neighbor and say, if you ain't never missed God, you just did. 
If you think you've never missed God, well, then you just missed God. So welcome to the rest of us. Same, he missed it. Somebody say he missed it. But he was still God's prophet. Hello? God just had to let him see, son. You, I look on the inside. I look in the spirit. You were busy looking on the flesh thinking that, oh, man, he, look, he, he surely fits the one to be anointed king. He's got it all together. But God didn't have his mind on the one that had it all fit in the flesh. He was looking on a little rooty, amen, noodle of a fella out there in the wilderness. Come on, somebody watching over his daddy's sheep, strumming on his heart, slaying lions and bears and CNN and Fox News went around to capture it. But God was watching him. Come on. God always chooses people who don't look the part. And if all you do is look in the flesh, you won't see who God's looking at. You won't see who God's won't use. Come on, somebody. Samuel missed God. In Deuteronomy chapter 13 and 13, the Bible said if a false prophet or dreamer of dreams arises among you, gives you a sign or a wonder, and it comes to pass, but it causes you to go after another God, he said, depart from them. Don't listen to them. Did you hear that? Deuteronomy 13 and 13 said a false prophet. Come on, a witch. Somebody with a familiar spirit that's familiar to the Holy Spirit. It sounds like Holy Ghost. Maybe even talk in tongues. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. may even interline and interlace a little bit of scripture here and there. Praise God. Amen. And tell you something you want to hear. And that thing come to pass. But it leads you away from this God. It leads you away from this book. It leads you away from this. Better turn. Amen. Amen. That's why in Acts 17 and 11 says, Search the scriptures daily to see if those things which were said are so or not. Amen. You know that's how cult leaders keep their people bound? They teach them their beliefs, but they don't allow those that are listening to them to have a copy. Come on, somebody, and study it for themselves. Amen? Praise God. You know how... People, even they did it today. I was in a Flash Foods and I was getting some gas. God helped some of the Flash Foods I've been too late today. They ain't too flashy. That means they ain't too. They, they get like Walmart. You go there, you got to wait forever. Amen. But I had a lady a hundred dollar bill because I needed I need to get some gas. And I didn't. That's all I had was that hundred dollar bill. And I hundred that hundred dollar bill. She put it up and lied for a minute. And she fell on it a little bit. And she, she said, oh, yes, it's good. She, do you know how people can recognize counterfeit? Because they spend a lot of time handling the real. Huh? Somebody shout, they spend a lot of time handling what's real. That's how they can detect what's not real. Somebody shout, this book's real. Yeah. Son, if you if you'll handle this word of life, first John four or first John one and one, somebody shout if you handle it, if you'll stay in it. When something fake comes around and tries to even speak it a little bit to support its fakeness and its phoniness, you will know it, you will know it, you will know it. Hebrews four and twelve says, For the word of God's quick. And by the way, that don't mean hurry up, preacher that's preaching, get through. In a hurry. Quickly. Quick means it revives dead things. Come on. It brings back life. And it puts breath back where there's no breath. Somebody say the word of God's quick, powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the valley of the soul of the sunder of, of the joints that are the spirit and the joints of the marrow. Come on, somebody. And as a discerner of the intents and thoughts of the heart, somebody shot his word. It's powerful. Here's part of its power. It's a discerner. It discerns the intents and thoughts of the heart. Somebody shout, it exposes me to me. It shows me me. A lot of times I try to go read the word and I find out before I'm through the word has read me. Hello? It's a lie. But it's a discerner. Do you know the word discern or discerner? Or discerning in the New Testament means to judge. Somebody say the word discernment means to judge. According to 
of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 10, there's what we call from the Holy Spirit, the spirit of discernment. It's part of his gifts. Come on. I've operated there many times before. I had a man up under my tent one night. Amen. Uh, when I had a tent ministry, it was in Alma, Georgia. He had on a three-piece suit. He spake in tongues, and he shouted along with all the other saints. But when he would shout, and when he'd speak in tongues, the Holy Ghost would grieve so deeply in me. He'd feel like a ton of bricks hit me right in the chest. And I'd try to preach, and he'd interrupt me while I'm preaching. By the way, Holy Ghost never interrupts himself to say what he's already said. He does things in decency and order. Come on, somebody. Anybody hear Holy Ghost? Anyhow, when he'd speak in tongues, it grieved me, but then he started speaking while I was trying to preach. Uh, and I stopped and I said, Sir, you're out of order. I said, Be seated. Holy Ghost don't need to, to interrupt what he's already saying to say it again. I said, He's saying it now through my lips. Be seated. You're out of order. You're distracted. Nobody was listening to me anymore, Pastor. They were watching him. Ain't that what happened in Acts 16? The woman with a soothsaying spirit, which had a spirit of divination, a spirit of python that it really translates that comes to suffocate on somebody. What was she saying? What she was saying was right. She was saying, these be the men of God that show us the way of salvation. Somebody shout, that sounded right. Because it was. Somebody shout, the soothsayer was saying what was right. But what she was doing through the spirit of witchcraft, though she was saying what was correct about Paul and those that were with him, these be the men of God. She was right right there. They show us the way of salvation and they were preaching Jesus. He is the way. Amen. Somebody shout, that's two things she said right. But what she was doing was distracting the people from the God of the men to the men of God. And Paul grieved in his spirit. The Holy Ghost vexed in him. He turned around. He didn't talk to the woman. He talked to the spirit. Acts 16 verse 18. And said, I command you come out of her. And that's exactly what happened. The devil come out of her. Come on somebody. Somebody shout. She was saying what was right. But she was distracting the people. She tried to get the people, amen, to look on the men of God instead of the God of the men. Anytime there's somebody in your midst, come on somebody, and there's something going on that tries to distract you from hearing this, come on, hear about somebody shout, that's a devil. The devil don't want you to hear the word of God. The devil lets you have church without preaching. That's what he wants. The devil will let you do anything in church. He wants anybody to come to church for anything but preaching. The old saints, they didn't say we're going to church on Sunday. They didn't say we talked about last night. They said we're going to Sunday preaching. Because they expected somebody to preach. But they didn't believe they'd been to church. Nowadays, modern Christian is trying to do everything but preach. 